Uh, can people hear me over there? Yeah? Okay, cool. So um, let's see if we can uh, finish this up quickly so we can go all to lunch. Uh, <laughs> so today I'm going to be talking about some of the infrastructure we created when we uh, deployed the, this new implementation of Vita and Chisel um, called TSIM, which is basically a cycle hacker simulation for custom hardware. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, the lowest level uh, talk in, in the entire day. Uh, so uh, what is TSIM? So TSIM is basically um, uh, enabling uh, cyclically Howard simulation or RTL in TVM. And uh, we basically create a, a software and hardware interface so people can plug their accelerators. Um, and it can support like basically any hardware architecture. So we don't rely on, uh, on a specific architecture so people can like explore different kind of designs. So a little bit of motivation about why, you know, why hardware simulation um, in TVM, or why we want to talk about hardware simulation before lunch. Um, the, first, um, the first motivation is that we want to basically accurately evaluate the entire stack. So we don't want to wait until the hardware is built to know like, whether we made the right decisions, right? So you can imagine you having a model like, let's say, ResNet, and you have a program that, you know, um, required by that model to be executed on some kind of hardware that you design. And you basically, you want to uh, answer the following question, like, should we build it, right? So this is the first motivation for having an infrastructure like this. Uh, perhaps a more interesting one is that this stack is, as you know, my early uh, colleagues uh, pointed out, this stack is always like moving and evolving. So uh, models changes, uh, and you can have now, you know, let's say GAN, you may have more complicated programs, and maybe you update your designs to have like different kind of features. So then in that case, you want to answer the following question, like how should we build it, right, um, under this like evolving um, requirements. Another uh, motivation, and I think uh, this is pretty useful, especially for hardware folks uh, deploying hardware, is that this infrastructure allows you to simulate hardware designs that are not like uh, that complicated, so you don't have to have like a fully fledged accelerator to start using this. Like you can go from a fixed function like hardware design, really simple, to a more complicated things like a, an entire processor, um, more generic and with instructions and all that stuff. So I think this is a this lowers the bar a little bit to to hardware folks to test their their uh, their designs and you know incrementally like build their their um, hardware stack. So how do we do all this? So b basically, we rely on, on Verlator, which is a fast and open source uh, hardware simulator. Uh, and we use Verlator for compiling Verilog to C++. Um, and um, also rely on, the, on something called DPI, which is a direct programming interface, uh, part of the Verilog um, standard. And for people that is not familiar with this, this is like the CFFI of, of Python, but in Verilog, so you can Use other, uh, use other languages like C to talk to Verilog modules and stuff like that. So this means that we can only like connect um, or use like uh, handwritten Verilog accelerators, but also like uh, accelerators designed in other languages that generate Verilog, like Chisel or any other languages that are out there. And basically we use Verilator to create uh, a cycle accurate model in C++. Uh, so how does this look like? So this is pretty similar to what we did, we, we do in a regular uh, uh, function that we execute in TVM. This is how it looks like from Python, so it's, uh, people can be very familiar with. And I think one of the interesting like, stuff that from people out there is like w answer this question, like what can you do? So we built this small block here. And uh, I think uh, we'll make, we'll, uh, make people uh, so people can do like accelerators on below this, uh, test their own accelerators, but they can also like do uh, software stuff on top. Um, things like, you know, you can write drivers, you can write runtimes, you can even like uh, put like a, your JIT compiler or, or Cogen or anything like that. So the, the cool idea here is that all of these layers that you build for simulations, you can reuse it later. So you can just remove the TSIM components out of it and then you, all of these like simulation efforts can be reused on the actual prototype when it gets built. And I think this is, this is especially important and interesting for NRE reasons. 
Uh, so in order to do all of this, like, what people would need to know is like a hardware interface, so how to connect their accelerators, and a software interface, like how do you talk to the accelerator from a software point of view. Uh, so in terms of the hardware interface, uh, we basically define a host interface, which we use for controlling the accelerator. This is basically like a register uh, interface. So you can um, write and read from a host, and also the accelerator can do the same task. And the user uh, basically specifies semantics of these registers. Uh, we also define a memory interface, which just uh, is used for data. Uh, so people can like uh, fetch data and read and write uh, data from, from DRAM, basically. Uh, and the user defines what kind of memory systems they want to have, either distributor, share, whatever. So the way this looks like is like this. Uh, here you can see at the top the host, and then the memory. These are a bunch of signals. People can check it out that later in the notebook also. Uh, and in terms of the software interface, we basically have like this basically four um, uh, functions that allows you to control like when to launch a simulation, when to finish simulation, like and specify also the cycles for how long you want the simulation to be run, uh, and also. Um, that, that, those cycles are like basically timeouts, and also uh, a way of reading and writing registers. Um, so the idea is that uh, the host will s can send like values and pointers to accelerators, so accelerator can like um, crunch some data from DRAM. So now I'm gonna move forward to the demo real quick to show people like how this works. So let me see. Yeah, so um, here you guys can find like a little bit of what I, uh, I just said in the, in the slides uh, about TSIM. Uh, I, I pre-built some of the stuff while Thierry was talking so we can speed this up. So um, here is how, you know, the same software interface I was, I was just talking about. Um, uh, so for, uh, I also created like a nice here, nice outline so people can like, you know, jump back and forth uh, between different sections. So uh, for this uh, particular example, uh, as with many other notebooks, we basically get in TVM. Um, and uh, in order to showcase the infrastructure, I created a simple vanilla accelerator, which basically uh, does, um, it add a constant to an array uh, and so the host can specify the length of that array and the base uh, addresses like for read and write and also specify the constant like through this interface to see, to like add the value and uh, to add uh, the value to each element of the array. Um, so I, I designed this accelerator in two, um, in two backends, basically in Verilog and Chisel to showcase like how we can have uh, des designs on different kind of languages. Uh, so here in this uh, path, you guys get, uh, people can find uh, the files uh, for the, well in this case it's, it's taking all the builds, I guess. But these are the files for, for the Verilog implementation, only four files, it's a really simple accelerator. Um, here there are uh, uh, some um, make file that you know allows you to build and create a shared library out of this uh, out of this design. Um, There's nothing done because I just did it. Uh, and here you guys can find also like the hard uh, files for for the Chisel implementation. Here again, like four files, um, so you guys can get an idea about how to do this. Excel, implement uh, an accelerator in Chisel as well. Uh, here's some uh, build steps. Um, this takes a little bit longer because it's fetching all the uh, dependencies for, for, for the project. Um, then we have a software driver. And here uh, I basically want to point out uh, the, the run method for the driver. So here we can see how you know, the, the simulation is being launched. Uh, how we, we basically pull in and waiting for completion to get some cycles of the execution of the accelerator, and then how we basically kill the, the simulation. And this is how we basically register uh, that function so we can invoke this from Python in TVM. 
Uh, let me see if this finished. Yeah, it finished. Um, so this is these are like built instructions for the driver. Um, and in this in this part, we are basically creating a test, uh, which means like we're gonna create a front end in Python for that driver. Uh, here we're importing the regular you know TVN uh, libraries, and we are defining a function that basically, depending on the backend selected, we're gonna load uh, shared library. For example, if people select the chisel, it will it will load the uh, Chisel's uh, shared library of our design. Uh, otherwise, it will load the Verilog version. Um, and then uh, also the software driver is being loaded here. So this, uh, this function will showcase like how people can you know, use all of this infrastructure to have their own designs on TVM. Uh, and here we're finally creating a, a simple test where we define a bunch, an array of random numbers with some uh, with some sizes um, and also like creating an array uh, called B uh, with uh, where the output is going to be stored. Here we basically spe we pass the the backend that we want to use, and yeah. And finally, here is like how you can execute this. So um, so if you go here, you can see how you know in this case the constant that we are adding is like two, uh, and this is the array, the input array, and this is the output. So you can see here, like if you modify, uh, for example, the constant value, um, you will see that uh, the results uh, are different and the cycles are pretty much the same. Now, if you change the size of the problem, um, which is let's say 40, uh, you will see how the cycles go up basically because the accelerator is executing for a longer time, right? Um, and similarly, like you can do this, the same example with Chisel now, um, uh, and in this case, you know you can start playing with this because it's the same driver. But we we are seeing here how you know um, how flexible our our stuff can be. So this case is like four thousand cycles. So um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have. Um, open for questions. Yeah. Uh, no, so the thing is like, uh, so for Verilator, uh it uh, currently support only, uh, let's say, vendor-free Verilog. So um, uh, one of the challenges for, for, I guess, for HLS, some HLS tools is that the ge generated Verilog sometimes contains certain uh, IPs that are tied to certain um, lock, vendor locking IPs. So it's gonna be, it's kind of challenging to, uh, to do that, but we certainly are looking at, at, at integrating like other simulators besides Verilator in the future. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, and also other um, we can reuse all other kind of infrastructure builds on top of that. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, so um, we did that already. So, um, uh, but uh, given the whole like timing constraints, um, we couldn't like have a demo for today. But um, we have already like uh, as as my colleague Thierry pointed out, like there is a place where you can specify a target for Vita. Uh, so we can currently so we can we can currently like support some of the unit tests of Vita by changing the sim to tsim. And you can run from Python, and you will execute all the bit instructions using this, and it will basically return all the cycle information from from the hardware simulation. So we have currently two simulators. The sim simulator is basically a functional simulator that doesn't have any timing information. It's based on a C++ model, um, and tsim is basically your actual RTL simulation. So it's using the Chisel version, translated that to Verilog with Chisel, and then from Verilog to C++ with Verilator, and then we have a cycle accurate uh, version of the entire hardware. So we have basically two kind of simulation modes right now. Uh, 
oh, we are doing that because, uh, you know, a lot of TVM stuff relies on shared libraries. So that is our file. So you can use uh, um, uh, CFFI, for example, from Python to invoke those. Because at the end of the day, we want users to have the same experience as running uh, like GPUs with Python, right? Like, or CPUs from Python. We want them to run the simulation uh, in the same way. Like they don't have to think about, oh, now I need to execute C. Yeah, I just want to execute stuff from Python. So basically we are doing this compilation so we can have shared libraries uh, of the hardware design, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I guess that will be all. Thank you, Luis.